In this short video, we will cover the modeling and simulation of MIMO communication systems within CAPSIM. Here we show the 2x3 MIMO OFDM system as used in the IEEE 802.11n draft proposal. And I'll go over this very quickly. Here we have a stream of bits coming into a scrambler and we have a convolutional encoder which is for example a half rate encoder then you go through the puncture at this point we have binary data which is then passed through a parser which takes the bit stream and splits it to two bit streams each bit stream would be half the data rate of the original bit stream each bit stream then passes through an interleaver a mapper and an inverse FFT and we insert a guard interval of course we're showing a simplified model here ignoring a lot of the other blocks for example the RFIC transmitter. Each stream is then transmitted through a transmit antenna so in this case we have two transmit streams. At the receiver we have three receive chains again we show a simplified model. At this receive chain we remove the guard interval and perform a forward FFT and we do that for all the other individual receive chains. We then pass these receive chains into a MIMO equalizer which then separates the two spatially multiplex channels into two separate channels which then go through the D mapper and D interleaver and then are combined to produce the high bit rate which then goes through the D puncture, the Viterbi decoder and the D scrambler. For example here we might have a data stream which is 2 times 54 megabits per second or 108 megabits per second and at the receiver we actually receive 108 megabits per second and over the air we're actually multiplexing, spatially multiplexing two streams. So this is a basic overview of a 2x3 MIMO system transmitting and receiving and, and the following will show how we can model this in CAPSIM and look at the performance of a 2x3, 2x2 or even SISO and, and we'll show also an MRC case. Here we show the block diagram of the 2x3 MIMO system as implemented in CAPSIM. Here we have the binary data generator. We have the encoder here, which we'll show later, encodes the data into a bit stream after the puncture, demultiplexing them into individual bit streams at half the bit rate of the input bit stream. Over here we go through the interleaver mapper and the inverse FFT and add the guard interval. And we pass it through a gain. In this case, the both gains are equal to 1. And this is a key block here, which is the, as you can see, the CX MIMO channel, which is, which is the block that models the MIMO fading channel. And we'll talk a lot about this block right here. So in this case, this block is modeling a 2 by 3 system. So we have two transmit streams coming into the MIMO channel block. And we have three receive paths in the receiver. So this is a 2 by 3 system just as in the previous example, a two transmit, three receive. So here we have three receive chains and in each receive chain we're adding individual noise for that particular receive chain. We remove the cyclic prefix, we perform a forward FFT and then we input these streams into the complex MIMO equalizer block which implements a zero forcing MIMO equalizer in this case and the two spatial streams are then output through the individual outputs at the MIMO equalizer. So this block over here, which is a key block, is the MIMO equalizer implemented with zero forcing, which implements this block over here. So we basically have a block that implements the over-the-air MIMO channel, in this case a 2x3 system, and the MIMO equalizer. Here the two streams are then taken to scatter plots which will plot the individual constellations of the streams and will show that the original, the original 64 QIM constellations including the pilot will be demultiplexed and the individual spatial streams will be plotted in terms of their constellations and we can see the performance of the MIMO communication system. In this diagram, we're illustrating the fact that the CAPSIM MIMO channel modeling block is actually implementing this model here, where between each transmit antenna, 
there is an impulse response to each individual receive antenna. So the MIMO channel actually implements, so the MIMO channel actually models each individual impulse response from each transmit antenna to each receive antenna in the time domain. And the parameters that are specified for this MIMO channel are simply the sampling rate. For example, if you're going to model a 40 megahertz channel, then you can use a sampling rate of 40 megahertz. If you're going to model nonlinearities, you can actually use a higher sampling rate, for example, 200 megahertz. The second parameter is the RMS delay spread of the channel, for example, 50 nanoseconds. And the third parameter, which is very important, is the seed that is used in order to generate the really fitting channels between each individual transmit antenna and receive antenna. So if we're going to test multiple realizations of MIMO channels, all we need to do is change the seed uh, for the MIMO channel model. And we'll see the effect of that in the next diagrams. One important point to realize is that in CAPSIM, the MIMO channel model block and also the MIMO equalizer block use auto fan in on the input and auto fan out at the output. That is, the block configures itself based on how many transmit streams are connected to its inputs and how many receive chains are connected to its output. It would automatically configure itself and model, for example, in this case, a 2 by 3 MIMO system. Later, we'll show how it can model a, the same block is used to model a 2 by 2 or even a 1 by 2 or 1 by 1 SISO system. The MIMO equalizer also is implemented using auto fan in and auto fan out. That is, depending on how many input streams and spatial streams are connected at the output, the block will configure itself to implement a, for example, in this case, a 2 by 3 MIMO equalizer. This is a very powerful feature in CAPSIM, and we will highlight this in the following blocks. In this diagram, we're showing that this is a hierarchical block, which is the encoder. And this is the details of that particular block as implemented in CAPSIM. And we see that the block is made up of data field. This data field basically formats the incoming data into a packet that's sent through the scrambler, in this case, which is an 802.11a scrambler, then to the convolutional encoder, which is a half-rate encoder. So we have twice the bit rate at its output. In this case, each individual branch here is the encoded convolutionally encoded bits. These are passed to the puncture block, which then produces a bit stream with puncturing. The bit stream, including puncturing and convolutionally encoded data, is passed through a demultiplexer, which then splits the incoming data between its two output branches. Each individual branch is then encoded using an 11A type encoding, in this case, 54 megabits per second, so we're using 64 QAM. Each one of these is a hierarchical block that is shown here. So this block example has an interleaver and a 64 QIM mapper, a pilot insertion, and the inverse FFT plus the generation of the cyclic prefix and adding the cyclic prefix to the inverse FFT. This block can also generate the preamble, for example, using 802.11n. In the following simulations, of course, we won't generate the preamble and we'll suppress that option. So here again, we show a 2x3 MIMO system as modeled in CAPSIM. And for simplicity, we're not showing the whole decoding process because we're going to highlight the actual scatter plots for the constellations in the two spatial streams, the decoded spatial streams here, in order to highlight the effectiveness of the MIMO equalizer and separating the two spatial streams. So again, here we have the MIMO channel model, and here we have the 2x3 MIMO equalizer and we have of course the three receive chains and the two transmit chains. This is a 2x3 system In this diagram we're actually showing a 2x2 system. Notice that these are the same blocks we don't have to generate a block unique for 2x2 and a separate block unique to 2x3. It's the same block depending on its inputs and outputs it'll configure itself to be either 2x3 or 2x2 MIMO channel. So it's very simple. All we have to do is, in this case, eliminate one of the receive chains and we get a 2x2 system. Or we can add a receive chain and get a 3x3 system. And then we can actually compare the performance of the two systems, which we'll do next. So here we show the scatter diagrams showing the constellations for the two spatial streams. In this case, spatial stream 0 and spatial stream 1 
which are at the outputs of the MIMO equalizer. And here we're showing that one spatial stream is stronger, has a better performance than the other spatial stream, which is weaker. This is the case for a 2x2 two two system. Let's go ahead and add another receive chain and build up a 2x3 system, which we show over here, and compare how it improves on the 2x2 two two system. So again, here's a 2x2 two two system with a strong and a weak spatial stream. Adding the extra antenna for a 2x3 greatly improves the performance, as you can see over here, where we have much better performance in case of the strong and the weak signal. Let's compare this with a 2x2 two two case, and you can clearly see the improvement by adding the extra antenna and receive chain. Here we show the case for a 2x3 system in which the channel realization is such that the two spatial streams have almost equal performance and we can compare this to the case where we have a particular channel realization for the MIMO system in which one stream has better performance than the other so we have a strong and weak situation and the difference is the fact that this implements a particular channel realization given the seed and in this case we implement a different realization using a different seed. So we can see that different channel realizations in a MIMO environment can give worse or better performance and we can easily model that in CAPSIM. Here's a very interesting situation where we're using a single input single output or SISO system in this case, this implements a 802.11a transmitter. And you can see that the MIMO channel model is the same block that we use for a 2x2 and 2x3 system, with the difference being that since only one input is connected, so we have one transmit stream and one output is connected, so we only have one receive chain, the block adapts itself because it's auto fan in and auto fan out. The block will adjust itself and in this case, it'll be a simple SISO channel model. Again, the parameters are the sampling rate, the RMS delay spread, and the seed. Here, the receive chain is shown here, where we remove the cyclic prefix to perform a forward FFT. We're showing the constellation before equalization and the constellation after equalization. In the next diagram, we're illustrating MRC, or maximum ratio combining. In this case, the transmitter we only have one transmitter but at the receiver we have two receive chains and both receive chains are then combined to produce a single spatial stream and we're going to show how MRC uh, for example improves performance so again the blocks are the same and all we did was just add another receive chain to the SISO case and the idea is to see how MRC can improve performance so in this presentation, we show the SISO performance versus the MRC performance. So here we show the constellation at the receiver for the case where we have single input, single output. And here we show the constellation with the addition of the extra receive chain. And we see that we get a dramatic improvement uh, in the performance. So in CAPSIM, we can easily model MIMO systems and do what if scenarios in terms of the benefits of adding additional receive chains or in the case of increasing the throughput adding extra transmit chains and then with the scripting capability in CAPSIM we can run multiple iterations in order to tabulate the performance for the various systems and compare their results. In the following section we will actually run a CAPSIM simulation of a 2x2 two two and 2x3 two open loop MIMO OFDM system. We will start out with a 2x2 two two system and then add another receive chain and develop a 2x3 system and compare the simulation results. Here we show the block diagram for a 2x2 two two MIMO system. We're generating the data, encoding it. Let's take a look inside here. If we go down one level, we see that the encoding involves the, the data field, which collects bits and, and organizes it into a packet. We, have a, we pass it through the 802.11a scrambler, the half-rate convolutional encoder, same as 802.11a. 
and the puncture block. The convolution encoder being a half rate encoder doubles the bit rate and here we have the two streams that are then input by the puncture block and the puncture block punctures the data and we have binary output stream here. We take the binary output stream from the convolution encoder and puncture block and pass it through the DMOX block which splits the streams between the two output ports so the bit rate on each stream is half the input bit rate. In this case for the 2x2 MIMO system we are trying to get a overall bit rate of 108 megabits per second which is equal to 2 times 54 megabits per second and each spatial stream will be 54 megabits per second and therefore we're using 64 QIM on the constellations. This hierarchical block here, let's go down one level and we observe that it is comprised of the interleaver, the 64QAM mapper, we insert the pilots, we compute the inverse FFT and also add the cyclic prefix and I'll put the samples in the time domain. The two gains over here are equal to one for now. This, this would allow us to actually model different gains in the path. The key block here is the complex MIMO channel model. Let's take a look at its parameters. The parameters consist of the sampling rate, which in this case is 20 megahertz, the delay spread, which is going to be 50 nanoseconds, and we have the seed. So this block here models the MIMO channel, so we have two transmit antennas and two receive antennas, and we have two receive chains shown over here. Each receive chain has its additive noise. We remove the cyclic prefix, perform the forward FFT, and then we input the stream into the MIMO equalizer which then produces the two output streams. So we have spatial multiplexing of the two streams and here we've separated the two streams and, and we will plot their constellations. So let's go ahead and run a simulation. So here we see the constellations for the two streams. Let's go ahead and zoom into this area over here. And we notice that one channel is stronger than the other channel. The other channel has more noise and distortion in this particular case. We're going to keep these two plots for this simulation and we're going to add another receive chain and model a 2x3 MIMO system. To add the 2x3 MIMO system all we need to do is add another receive chain. So let's go ahead and duplicate this block, block here. We'll also duplicate the remove prefix block and also the forward FFT. Let's go ahead and connect them up. So it's that simple to actually set up another receive chain and notice that because of auto fan out the MIMO channel actually is going to model another receive antenna and it'll adjust and reconfigure itself appropriately. The same is true of the MIMO equalizer. In this case it will configure itself as a 2x3 MIMO equalizer. It will, because of auto fan in, notice that it has another receive chain and reconfigure itself appropriately. So now we're going to simulate the case where we have a 2x3 system. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. So now we have The following results for the two spatial streams and we like to compare these results with the results for the 2x2 two two case. Here we're comparing the results for the 2x3 two spatial stream to the results for the 2x2 two two case and we see a dramatic improvement in the constellation. This is a comparison of the weaker channel for the case of a 2x3 versus a case where, where we were dealing with a 2x2 MIMO system and we see again the improvement by adding the additional receive chain. Let's go ahead and delete all these plots. 
So we can see how using the complex MIMO channel model and the complex MIMO equalizer, we can build MIMO systems and actually test various MIMO configurations. In this case, for open loop MIMO systems, we can test 2x2, 2x3, 3x3, 4x4 systems and analyze their performance. We can also script this topology and run iterative simulations.